Okay. We have a song to start the afternoon. So this was after a journal writing weekend, and then Malu received this song like a gift from the Spirit. And it's very much about guidance. Mm -hmm. So it feels beautiful to hear it. I'm hearing it for the first time. Mm -hmm. It feels so perfect from from the spirit for today.
I was in prayer over lunchtime about what the experience would be this afternoon to support uh, practice with some of the teachings. And it's the practice, it's an experiential that I did in Hilo that Diksha mentioned. It's uh, dyads. And so I'll give a, a description of it and an example, a demonstration of it, but I feel to go into the real purpose and the value of where this practice can lead. And I think it's a beautiful demonstration Example, just a few sharing Diksha after you had this experience of going so deeply into the presence and the fact of I need to do nothing, I'm not the healer, that your mind lost interest in the world. <laughs> yeah. mm. So there's a section, there's two sections in the course, and these sections, uh, and the whole psychotherapy pamphlet is along the same lines, but one section is true empathy, and one section is called the unhealed healer, and then in the psychotherapy pamphlet, which is an additional booklet, that's included in the newer version of the course as published by the Foundation for Inner Peace. It's in here under supplements. And you can also get the psychotherapy booklet uh, separately. But in these two sections in the text and in the psychotherapy booklet, Jesus is... telling us so clearly that the Holy Spirit is the healer. Not me. I'm not the healer. And he says when it comes to practicing with true empathy, at the beginning of this section, it says true empathy is not to understand suffering at all. So that's a pretty high state of mind. To not understand suffering. Because most of the time when someone comes up to you and says, I have a problem, or I have an issue, or I have, uh, I'm afraid about something, immediately your mind identifies and can say, yes, I understand. I have experienced the same thing. Or, oh, I can feel your fear, your pain, your... And there's a reaction, a response that happens, and then you're trying to help fix it as quickly as possible. You want to help this other person. Jesus describes this as forming a special relationship in which the suffering is shared. You're sharing the experience of suffering. This is false empathy. <coughs> True empathy is the Holy Spirit's perspective. You remember the Holy Spirit is pure light, pure love, the awareness, the knowing that the separation did not happen. It's a belief. And then everything that's being experienced or perceived as an effect of that belief is in need of healing and bringing to the light of truth, bringing <coughs> illusion to truth to be healed. But false empathy is when you forget all about the Holy Spirit and you say, I understand, I can help you. It's literally falling, like falling from grace, falling from the light of truth, leaving love, and coming down into a human identity that understands suffering and then attempting to help and heal from here. And Jesus in the 
a section of the course called The Unhealed Healer, he says the world is full of unhealed healers. The healers themselves, the therapists themselves need healing. But as almost as a defense against their own healing, instead they're focusing on healing everyone else. So being a therapist or being a healer, if used appropriately, like in the psychotherapy pamphlet, if you really practice as a psychotherapist according to Jesus' directions, practicing with psychotherapy is an awakening path. Because you're aware that every person who shows up is coming for you, for the healing of your mind. They're coming to help you heal and see your own thoughts, your own beliefs, and to have the opportunity to listen to the Holy Spirit, receive the healing for yourself, receive the gift, receive the answer, and then after you've received it for yourself, you can share it, you can extend it. <laughs> that was a good sigh. <laughs> So in the true empathy section, Jesus says the reason why you haven't actually done this yet, the reason why you keep perceiving suffering and trying to help others from a place of uh, concern, the reason why you've not yet completely experience the Holy Spirit doing his job as the healer is you have not let him. You keep jumping in. So the Holy Spirit's there, available, ready, knows the answer. But the Holy Spirit is also eternal patience. (laughs) So the Holy Spirit's answer is there waiting to be received, waiting to be given away. But it has to wait if our mind is too busy with itself. I know what you need. I know how to help. Then the Holy Spirit will wait. So this is where mind training comes in. Mind training. And it takes a lot of mind training to be released from this addiction of this I know mind, this I have the answer, I can help, I know what you need. This immediate I response that speaks first. Jesus says the ego speaks first. It's like an impulse. So it's, it's... takes training to allow space to pause and part of the reason why there is resistance to this is that in the pause in the space we don't know what's going to happen So it's much more familiar, it's much safer to stay in the role of being the helper, the fixer, the therapist, the teacher, the mother, the parent, the boss, whatever the role is, the big sister, the big brother, whatever the role is where I know what's best for someone else. It's safe, it's familiar. But in the opening to be you in charge, I will step back and let him lead the way. There can be a fear of not knowing what's going to happen or if the Holy Spirit is even going to show up. So that's part of what we're going to practice with today. We're going to practice with 
letting the Holy Spirit be the healer. Because in doing this, we're going to do it in a, in a structured way, in partners. But the transfer value of this for your mind and for your life is it's transformational. It really is incredible. Because if you can learn to step back and let him lead the way, <clears throat> practice with listening for the Holy Spirit in every relationship, you're free. <laughs> it means you're not responsible for fixing, healing, changing anyone else's life ever again. <laughs> Can you, can you imagine that? <laughs> imagine if all of the people that you love in your life, you don't have to have an answer for any problem, any of their problems. Now that's actually true. But it, we're so used to thinking that we know and being involved and playing a role that we haven't let that be learned yet. <laughs> and the good news is that, you know, when you really do let Jesus or let the Spirit be in charge, you'd be amazed at what he can do. <laughs> When you think of everyone who is channeled, be it Beethoven, be it Malu <laughs> with the song, be it a great painter, be it Svava, who's in Living Miracles community, she's received over a hundred songs in the last year about awakening. She didn't she didn't write them. She didn't think of them. She received the melodies and the lyrics. She received them from the spirit. Everyone you can think of who's intuitive and happy and what their gift is is effortless has come through them effortlessly. Think of the Beatles. It was effortless. It was a collaboration of being in the presence of the Spirit together. And then, wow, look what just arrived. A lot of Kara's music. It's intuitive. It's just being present, showing up. And then, wow, look at what wants to come through. It's gifts from the Spirit that are for us and then can be given away. And this transfers not just to what seems like creative areas of our life because not everyone will be a musician not everyone will be a painter not everyone will be something that looks creative but who we are is a creation of God our natural state of mind is creative it's creativity it's extension of love So it's a, it's a natural state of mind that we should be in all the time. Just listening, receiving, giving this light, this inspiration and not be too concerned about the form, outcome. I have a... There was a friend who came from Colombia who spoke Spanish. She was self-taught in English. And she came over... <coughs> Many years ago, she met David, and she said, I feel like I'm meant to come to America, and I'm to help translate one of your websites into Spanish for the Spanish people. He said, okay, great, come over. So she came over, and she sat in front of the computer, and then she looked at the words, and she realized that she just didn't understand them. She didn't understand the English well enough to be able to translate it into Spanish. She was very fluent in her home language. 
She was also very fluent in French, but her English she just picked up. So she sat there and she said, Okay, Holy Spirit, you guided me here. You'll have to translate this website. So she put her hands on the keys and she translated the whole website from English into Spanish. And after, after some time of doing this, she said to David, Is this okay? Is this okay that I'm just trusting completely in the Holy Spirit? And he said, oh yeah, that's how the English website <laughs> happened in the first place. <laughs> so I didn't write what's on that website. <laughs> so Jesus or the Holy Spirit, and I could go on and on and on and on and on and on about all the things that there's sayings even in the Bible is I of myself can do nothing but through me my father does all things and Jesus goes on and on about that how many great things can be done through us our perception of ourself is so small we think well I'm so you know I can do this and I can do this I have these skills and these abilities but a lot of limits so so much of this journey is about mind training to see the doubt thoughts for what they are, deny the denial of truth, deny the denial of truth, step out of the way, and let the Holy Spirit be present, and then see what God can do. At one time, I was going through a divorce and I was in Australia and I felt really quiet for a period of months. I didn't feel like speaking or being with other people. And after some time, I then could feel like I wanted to extend, but still I didn't want to, I couldn't think of what that would look like. And the Holy Spirit said to me, ask your friend for a guitar lesson. So my friend that I was staying with in Australia was a guitar teacher. So he taught me two chords. And I sat in my cabin with this guitar with two chords. I was so happy. I was playing with these two chords. I would just play and play and play for six hours a day, eight hours a day. And then I'd been praying, you know, going through a lot of healing. So my prayers became songs. And by the time I left... There, three months later, I had about six chords <laughs> and about six songs. But these songs, every song that I had, I wanted to play it. It was my healing. It was my prayer. It was my relationship with God. And so I loved to hear the lyrics. I loved to be present with, with the singing and my friend said to me at one point, he said, wow, you're like the best student I've ever had because you practice so much and you just pick it up so easily. And the thing is, what we noticed was every time he tried to be a guitar teacher and teach me something new, I couldn't pick it up. I could not remember it at all it would feel complicated and difficult but when we joined together like the Beatles did <laughs> just to relax and jam and play and be in the inspiration then he'd, he would hear oh I want to show you this and he would show me it and I would understand it effortlessly and I would love it and then want to play it so I did not learn through practicing. It was purely a gift from the Spirit. Every part of it was a gift from the Spirit to receive and then want to extend. And this is, this is the way it is with the Spirit. And then it was less than a year later we had a 
festival in Utah at the monastery. And I arrived a couple of months before the festival and two friends were there, two musicians who were really wonderful musicians, Eric and Laura. And I said, oh, I can share one of my songs with you. So I shared a couple of my songs. We all dropped into deep meditation. It was so mystical. And so we started singing and harmonizing together. The next thing, okay, how's this? See what God can do. At the festival, I was on stage playing, recorded an entire (laughs) album with my two friends that's incredible. (laughs) It's a beautiful album of music. And after that, I'm off on tour playing guitar and singing at Course of Miracles gatherings all around America. And a friend had joined the community by then who used to be a rock star. It's like, Kirsten, how does that happen? That doesn't happen in this world. You can't do that. <laughs> to, to be a musician, to have an album, to learn how to play, it, it's supposed to take work and time and effort and planning and thinking. All of it was given. Unbelievable. Yeah. 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 Out of the blue. I, I was a kindergarten teacher, so I was happy to sing for children, but I, I didn't sing in front of adults. Uh-huh. And these, but these songs are, are so beautiful. Everyone who hears holiness just goes, oh, wow, that is such a beautiful song. And it's because it's from God. You know, it's received from God. So he's a website designer. He's a songwriter. <laughs> He's a translator. He provides the content for the books that we write. He provides the lyrics for the songs that we sing. He provides the recipes and the love that goes into the recipes for the food that we enjoy. It's opening up to allowing the space for this light, for this creativity that's who we are. It's actually who we are to inspire us. So whatever skills you have, they can be used by the Spirit. Or you might pick up new skills like that. I've never played guitar. So we have no idea. We have no idea how the Spirit is going to inspire us in this lifetime. And that's good news. Because if we all thought, oh, it's only... They can only imagine the past or what we've done before. That's not inspiring. (laughs) We all know there's something, something more for our heart that we want to just open up to and give. So, so yes. So the the mind training is absolutely key because the mind training brings our mind into alignment with the spirit into this humble place it's like a training in humbleness of I will step back and let you lead the way I am not in charge I invite you I welcome you I'm willing I'm offering you everything I've got we're learning to, to be present and then to allow the space to then observe and witness. 